Welcome to today's IG Trade in the Markets podcast. In amongst the negative headlines about the spread of the global coronavirus pandemic has been the news that dividends are being cut or suspended for the foreseeable future at a number of companies. And we're talking here uh, across borders, across geographies, across sectors. Is there anywhere now to hide if you are a dividend investor? Simon Popple joins us now from Brookfield Capital Intelligence Report. Simon, before we get into the detail, just remind us why dividends are so important. Well, a lot of people have been investing um, in certain stocks because they have a good dividend yield and the dividend yield is very important to their income. Uh, This is particularly true of of perhaps people who've retired, but uh, there are other people who uh, they rely in some way, shape or form on dividend income from stocks. So when you've got shares or companies uh, saying they're no longer going to pay a dividend, then in certain instances, that actually changes the whole rationale for people actually owning the stocks in the first place. And of course, it's a compound interest thing as well that uh, attracts many people to this area, of course. Just to remind us um, then what is happening to dividends. Um, We've been monitoring the situation over the last uh, four or five weeks or so, and, and to the alarm of many, we are getting so many companies now either cutting dividends heavily or or suspending them. Why? Well, the companies are very concerned about um, cash flow, uh, understandably. And with uh, the economy sort of grinding to a halt, you know, they've still got uh, people to pay. They've still got rent to pay. They've got a lot of outgoings, but they, they've got very few, if any, in, in, incomings. Um, perhaps with the exception of a few uh, companies, you know, a lot of companies literally have, have had to shut up shop. And so um, because of this, they need to uh, be very, very careful with their cash flow. And therefore, dividends are an obvious thing to cut or cease paying entirely uh, because um, uh, obviously it's cash out of the business. So if, if they can retain cash, then they're going to do that. I think it's worth noting as well that there are some companies, of course, that uh, that have remained dividend payers. I notice actually, um, as of the time of recording, we've just seen some headlines coming through from Tesco, which has seen fit for whatever reason to increase its dividend by a whopping 58%. But that's an outlier. Let me just um, return to the subject in question here and talk about the bulk of the news headlines that we're getting about the negativity around dividends. Um, I just wanted to ask you the question that I put at the top. Is there now anywhere to hide outside of Tesco, which I said is an outlying uh, sort of story uh, within that particular area? Uh, Is there anywhere to hide? Is there anywhere where we can look at uh, some sort of guarantee, if you like, if that's possible now, uh, for for dividend payments? Yeah, I I think you have to be very careful with the word guarantee. But what people um, should do is be very, very careful about uh, investing in stocks that have traditionally paid dividends. And one area which I'm particularly interested in are Australian gold and silver mining companies because the coronavirus has not caused um, a shutdown of several uh, of these companies. And therefore, they are still producing gold and silver. And because of that, I think they um, stand a pretty good chance of uh, of at least uh, paying a dividend, and uh, people therefore should perhaps have a look at this sector because I think it could be one where um, a lot of, a lot of money flocks into it uh, because there are so few areas where you can actually receive a dividend. So I think it may be a um, sort of a, a good area for people to you know to at least take a look at. Why? Uh, are they still paying dividends? Well, gold and silver mining it typically has got a shorter supply chain than uh, many conventional uh, companies, that, you know, either producing products or services. Um, just to sort of cut to the chase, if you've got um, a deposit, typically there's a processing plant fairly nearby, and therefore a lot of the value in the company is a fact that they've got a processing plant and they've got a, a, a deposit. And therefore, you're, you're adding a lot of value by mining the ore and processing it. 
Um, quite often these are in fairly remote places, so there's a, a sort of a natural element of self-isolation. And once um, you process the ore, uh, you, you, you end up with a, with a very valuable asset that um, can then be sold on. If you contrast that with a lot of um, manufacturing and service businesses, there are far more links in the chain. And as we all know, you only need one of these links to fall over for the whole chain to fall over. And therefore, with, with gold and silver companies, I think there's, there's a, a greater chance that they can actually generate the cash flow uh, that the investors are looking for, rather than certain companies where uh, they've got so many links in the chain that they, they need everything to, to pan out uh, as expected uh, to, uh, to deliver you know, what they're looking to do. Now, I know under financial regulations, you can't talk about individual stocks, so I'm not going to ask about any recommendations. But I do want to know a little bit more about your thoughts on the future. Uh, clearly, with the end of the pandemic, possibly maybe in some areas of the world, might now uh, be in sight. There are a lot of areas where there is still a lot of uncertainty. What about the future? What about the, the guarantee, as I put it, and you quickly pointed out that there's never really any possible guarantee can be given in this area. Uh, how do you feel about the future in dividend payments? Well, I, I think a lot depends on how this all plays out, because uh, we're all hoping this is going to be a V-shape re uh, recovery. But you know, there are people who are saying it's going to be more like a W-shape, because um, I, I think at Wuhan, they are lifting the lockdown. Um, now, whether these people then move around China and uh, if that spreads the virus, then clearly, you know, it's going to be more of a W shape uh, recovery. Uh, if it, um, if, if if that doesn't happen, then perhaps you know we're hopeful of a V shape. But at the moment, there's huge uncertainty in the world. I mean, no one really knows, first of all, how long this virus is going to last, and then, you know, when it does come to an end, and at some point, obviously, it will. Um, how long it's going to take for companies to get back up and running? Uh, and you know, to, to the position that they previously were in. Mm. Just, just one final question. And knowing you're leaning towards the the gold market, you've spoken about some of the gold miners. Clearly, they they are paying dividends. Just to remind us again about the potential uh, for investment returns in gold, because uh, famously, gold, of course, doesn't pay a dividend. No, absolutely. I mean, that's been one of the main arguments for not holding, uh, particularly physical gold, in the past. Um, but I think the argument has largely gone out the window because um, bonds, a lot of bonds have got even negative yields, uh, let, let alone no yields. So um, whether you know, if you've got a choice of holding something like gold, which is viewed as a safe haven, a safe haven asset, and, and has got considered valuable you know, all around the world, or a bond which is very much linked to a, a particular currency uh, and therefore government and um, Perhaps has got a negative yield and is is very much pertinent to to that particular country. Um, then uh, I'm not saying you should put all your eggs in one basket, but I think it makes sense to have a little bit of diversification um, just in case. Yep. Okay. Look, Simon, we'll leave it there. But thanks indeed for joining us for today's uh, podcast. That's Simon Popple joining us there from Brookville Capital Intelligence Report. And if you want to speak to Simon in person, you can do through his website www.brookvillecapital.com.